All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be working on this HP Envy 360 laptop. This is the convertible 13 inch version, and we got two problems with this laptop. One is it's got this kind of classic problem, and you can see the owner has some tape on it here where the top cover has separated from the LCD screen and the hinge that's inside the two of them. The other problem that we've got going on with this, I'm just going to kind of gr grip it very tightly so that we don't have any further breakage of the glass so that you can see. But the other problem we've got going on is we've got a couple of cracks where it's been damaged here and here. And uh, of course then it's broken down here because of, of the hinge letting, not being addressed earlier. So what we're going to do is a couple of things. We're going to be replacing the LCD screen and we're going to be replacing this metal cover. And I'll also show you if you have just the metal cover problem, a way that you can get that repaired separately. Now in order to get this going, all along the edge underneath here is uh, glue strips, very similar to what you see on an iPhone battery. And so I'm going to be using a tool here called an iFixit eye opener. It's basically just a plastic tube filled with some gel. I'm going to pop it in the microwave, it's going to heat up, and we're going to be laying that on these edges while we prize this off. We're going to have a couple of different tools here. We're going to have a collection of guitar pick type tools that we're going to be using as we go around. We're going to be having a thin bladed piece of metal to kind of come in here and pop the clips. This is another iFixit tool I like. And then we're also going to have a selection of spudgers. This is a metal spudger. This is a plastic one. So these tools, along with a couple of different plastic prying tools, will be what we'll be using. Will you be using an X-Acto knife to deal with cutting the tape rather than trying to pull it off? And then as we get it partially separated, we're going to be using some regular tape just to hold the, the broken glass into position so it doesn't go all over the place. And the last couple of tools we'll have is we'll have a couple of suction cups to help pull things off and a couple of tweezers when we get ready to disconnect the connectors for the LCD. So let's go ahead and microwave our eye opener and get started. All right, we've let this sit here for about four minutes. That should be enough to have this loosened up. And then while we're working over here, we're just going to let the rest of the heat start working on the top. I'd like to start on the bottom here so there's no glue on this lower hinge area. You just want to be super, super patient. Kind of get this guy in here. And then we're going to use our guitar picks as we go. Trying to get the little flat ones first before I use them up. I can feel it's kind of stuck right there, so we'll go ahead and heat that up some more while we keep working it. But yeah, this is a real pain to get loosened up here. You just see what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to put some steady pressure on the glue strip while we work our guitar pick into position and when we get it far enough up I'm going to stick a piece of cardboard on it here so that we can work on the other sides without worrying about this side lifting back up again so just going to kind of keep working it forward like that until we get it all loosened up but this is just like what you'd see on an iPhone battery super super sticky strip in here and then on the sides, there's little clips. And the key thing is we just don't want to force it. If you get something like this where it's really sticking and you've lost the heat in this thing, pop it back in the microwave and zap it with some more heat, which is what we're going to do right now. All right, guys, we're going to continue on here. Just if I can get you a little bit more light. There's a little piece of the glue strip coming out there. Make sure you wait 10 minutes before reheating these kind of eye opener devices. But again, heat is your friend with this type of problem. Then we're going to come over here with our X-Acto knife. We're just going to cut this little piece of tape here so that it's not in our way. We 
We're going to go much slower on this corner because it's one of the corners that's fractured, as you can see. And just again, just letting the heat do the work for us. At this point, we've got this side off, and we're going to start working on the top. I'm going to go ahead and cut the tape. Just so it's not something else that we're fighting against. I'll keep trying to position this flashlight where I think it might help you. There you can see, you just heard the tape had a big let go right there inside. Lost my guitar pick. Let me just use one of these for a second. Hopefully you guys can hear that, where it's just slowly prizing away the glue, but it's still really stuck over here. So we're going to let that sit for a little bit, and we'll pick it up again. All right, guys, we've given it about three more minutes under the heat. And that piece on the corner that was kind of stubborn before finally decided to give in. So we're working our way around this corner. We're going super slow here because it's all fractured right up under this tape. But most of the work is done by the heat and this uh, little thin metal tool here that I'm using. Start working on this side. Get ourselves a little pick in here. There we go. Just let go. It's slow and steady pressure. That's the key to not breaking anything. Make sure that whole piece just let go right there. Fantastic. Stick this guy in here. Okay, so we're going to need some of our picks back, like I was mentioning. So what we're going to do is we're going to start swapping our picks for a piece of cardboard. Real thin cardboard. You can cut the piece of a cereal box, whatever you can go grab. But you just don't want it to start reattaching itself while you're working over on this side. most of the whole tool in here at this point to hold it. Cut this last piece here and boom, there we go. All right, now before we actually remove it, we're going to do some more taping all the way around because as we need to lift this up, you can see there's some pretty severe glass fractures here. We don't want any of this stuff to shatter and get all over the place. So we're going to take a few moments off camera here to basically run these cellophane packing tape strips all along the edge of the glass. Now you only have to do this if you're replacing a broken LCD screen. And if you're not replacing a broken LCD screen, you can obviously skip this piece. So let me go take care of this and we'll resume. All right guys, we've got our cardboard in on the top. We took our guitar pick and tools out over here because it's, it's largely done. All I'm trying to do now is get it released from the bottom. We don't have to fight any more glue, but we just got to fight a bunch of broken glass over here. But I think pretty much it's kind of popped out enough. Yep, it's popped out enough. So at this point, we can fold it forward. Now, because of the glass, you know, we put all this tape on here. We folded a few pieces of the tape up to kind of use it like a lever. Something else you could also do if the glass wasn't broken, you could use one of these suction cups to help pick it, pick it up, but I don't want to push anything on here because it's broken. All right, so we're just going to slowly rotate this forward. Now, this will no longer be attached to the cover or the hinges. 
I'm just going to slowly fold her back. It's held on by some of this tape is all. All right, so now we've exposed the connectors that we're going to need to pull to get this off. And we've also exposed the cover. And the key part about this, and actually this is probably not the uh, best view here. Let me make some room. We're going to shift this around so I can show you something. All right, now we got some room here. I can show you what I wanted to show you. So there, this here are the plastic strips that we were heating up to let go, right? You can feel them are still super sticky. There's one that runs all along the top here and all along the top here. And they don't have the little pull things where you can give them a stretch and have them let go. They're just not that way. They're too cheap. So you have to work them off this way. So there's two glue strips that run along each side. And then along the top, you can see there's a, a glue strip, that kind of like a, a fat piece here, then a small L, then a small glue strip that runs here, and then a long piece that goes fat here, like a big fat L, right? Long, fat goes there. The two things you want to take note of are the part numbers. So if you're just replacing the cover because it's broken, and so now we can see what happens on these hinges. Pick this up a little bit. Fold the hinge up. You can see the hinge delaminates from the cover. Here's the part number for this model. Replace with HP Spare 60939-001. There's three screws here. We're not going to take them out yet because there's also, if you take note here, there's a small wire that runs along the perimeter and goes up here. This is the Wi-Fi antenna. So there's one on this side and there's another one on this side. And we'll have to remove both of those to change this out. But we can take the broken one off so you have a better view. On these 13-inch models, it's different than the bigger ones. On the bigger ones, we usually have our small little brass ferrules or something of that nature into the plastic cover and then the screws go into it. What typically happens is the plastic breaks. But on these 13 inch ones, it's actually metal. So there's a metal bracket here. If we zoom in, we can see it's threaded where the screws go in through the metal hinge. It's never the hinge that breaks. It's the attachment point for the hinge onto the cover. And this was originally by the factory bonded on here. So one way you can do the repair is you can get some epoxy like JB Weld. And you can sand all the old adhesive off of here. Because you can see it there is kind of a yellow cover color. And it's going to make it rough. But if we zoomed in enough, you can see there's lots of tiny holes stamped into this piece of metal. And that's to give some bite for the adhesive. So if you clean all the adhesive off this piece and clean it off the cover, and this is all you have, and you don't have any damage, like in this case we've got the screen damage as well, you can repair this just by getting this guy glued back on. Take yourself a small clamp once you've got it back into position and, and hold it in until the epoxy cures, and that is a quick fix for this particular problem on a 13-inch. But like I said, there's the part number, so if you if you feel you can't do that or you feel like the damage is too extensive for that you can get a replacement and that's what I've done here and I'll put a link in the description to this particular part but HP I'll show you in a separate segment won't sell these but clearly somebody at their factory in China is selling these um, and so what we can see here is this is the identical right down to all the stickers other than obviously the date code um, there's a couple of sellers on eBay that make these available. Exact same part number, exact same in every way. And in particular, there's a, a ground strap that's part of this hinge, as you can see. It helps cut down on interference that can affect the Wi-Fi. It can also affect the LCD screen. And on ours, this hinge, this piece broke off and all the flexing, it was just not repairable. So that's one reason to go ahead and take this. And you can see these small pieces of blue tape here, along the edges here, along the top, these are the glue strips that help hold it to the LCD screen. And when you have it all in place, you'll pull the one down here, and that'll help hold this ground strap against this unanodized portion of the aluminum cover. So that's the cover piece. And then when you're all down, of course, you can pull the uh, little protective cover off the HP logo that's been burnished into the aluminum. So there's the cover. We'll put that on last. The next part number to take note of is for the LCD. 
if we swivel her around a little bit, that part number is here. So this is the number you want to look for to find the right LCD. In this case, it's an LP133 WF4, and then there's an, an SPXA4 subcode. Um, that's what you'll look for when you're searching for that piece. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. So I've got one of those that I ordered for this repair. Comes in a nice little styrofoam container. And it looks like this. Now it doesn't, this is more of a total knockoff than a clone. So it doesn't have all the exact same markings on it as the HP one. Right, so, but it's... It's designed to replace it. And there's a lot of instructions in here telling you that there is a type one type of laptop connector, and they tell you that you know the, the different connector on the replacement one it fits, but it has a different locking uh, type. Then they tell you there's a type two connector, and they tell you to ignore the difference on on that. You know, don't touch it, right? Because you get your oils from your skin in there can can mess it up and then the type three and how that gets attached. Um, anyway, so then when we get to point of the point, putting this on, we'll take another closer look at that. So this is, though, and is supposed to be, we'll find out in this project right here, this is supposed to be an exact replacement for this, right down to the X360 logo on the side, but what you'll notice it doesn't have is it won't have the HP logo on the bottom anymore. Um, they can't uh, do that probably for copyright reasons and the lawyers and all of that. Now HP won't sell these parts. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I'll, I'll show you on HP what you'd have to buy is this whole thing as a unit with the hinges and mount it to the base and it would cost more than the laptop is worth. So I don't even know why they even offer it. So we won't be going that route. All right, so the next thing on this is we're going to go ahead and remove the LCD. And so what we're going to need to do on the, to remove the LCD is we've got these various connectors here, and they're under some little bit of stress right here. So I just want to get this piece of tape that was holding this guy down that I didn't want holding him down. So we're going to start by pulling off this strip and this strip, this strip and this strip. These are all various insulation strips insulation in terms of, of electromagnetic interference. Get it started with a small one and then you can switch to something bigger that you can grab it better until you can get it up enough to get with your finger. And like everything in this project, you gotta go super slow. Everything's fragile. Everything's prone to breakage. None of it was designed to be serviced. All the manufacturers now have gone to the point where they just want you to throw it in the recycle bin and buy a new one. But we're not going to do that. All right, so what that's doing is that's exposing this first connector. Same thing, we're going to go through and do this. And I'm not actually going to bore you guys with taking all these little strips of tape off, but just get the idea here. So I'm going to be going down to one more and then uh, we'll do the rest of them off camera and come back. But we want to make sure we're super slow because we don't want to tear anything because we need these strips to go back into their position. I'm just going to slowly work it off. Prefer to grab it with the finger and then hold it down so nothing tears. And then try not to let it get stuck on itself. All right, so we're going to go do this one and this one. We've got these two strips here so that we can get to that one. We're going to get all that stripped off, and we'll come back and do these connectors. All right, guys, we've got our eye opener back on here. You can see over here we've got these strips off. In order to get this one off, we've got to remove the webcam assembly. These two strips here are not glued down, right, but the webcam assembly is. And if we look here in the front, so the webcam assembly, see if we zoom in here, there's the metal frame of it. These white strips on the end are pieces of tape. There's adhesive tape here, here, and in the middle. If we look at our replacement screen, we see very similarly there's blue um, coverings for the four tape pieces that are going to put the webcam 
and microphone assembly into the replacement. So we're just heating all this up. We've got both the white adhesive on the front here, and then there's a big piece of adhesive uh, aluminum shielding for RF interference that we need to get let and go here. I think that we've had this sitting long enough. It's been sitting for a few minutes, so let's give it a shot and see if we can work this out. This is definitely another thing where you just want to go slow, slow, slow. You can just see, you know, zoomed in here, right? So that the, the tip of the tweezers are getting stuck to the adhesive. It's all nice and sticky from the heat. We're just trying to get loosened up off this adhesive that's in the front piece here. What we've got here is like a little circuit board sitting on a metal frame. Might just keep the heat going while we work this, right? So we're just going to keep doing this back and forth. I don't know if you can see in there light-wise. I don't know if that's too much glare or not, but you can see another piece of that white tape where I'm working this piece off here, and there's a little metal frame. We're just trying to get that to let go by moving it back and forth against the adhesive with the heat of the eye opener. There we go. All right, so there's one corner almost lifted off. So we're going to have to do that also on this side, and then we'll be ready to kind of peel it back with this big piece of aluminum tape that we're trying to heat up while we go here. All right, so we're going to get something in on this side to hold this. And I, I just can't stress enough, guys, it's patience, 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 super slow stuff here to avoid any kind of damage, right? Because this piece is not knocked off. And so you've got to not damage your original. There we go. All right, so we've gotten that piece of white adhesive completely removed. We've got this one almost completely removed. There it goes. It finally let go. All right, so there's our webcam and microphone assembly that's going to fit into the new screen. All right, so now we want to get it peeled off. So I'm going to block your view a little bit here. So as you pull on this, keep this in straight and lift up slowly. You can tell this is still super sticky. So we're going to let it bake for a little bit longer, and we'll pull it again. All right, let's see how we're doing, folks. Yeah, this aluminum piece is really, really tough adhesive. So it's really imperative to let the heat do the work for you. But she's coming off. Just want to protect this, these little circuit boards, right? You don't want them to get broken. And if it ever gets to where it feels like it's gotten sticky again, just stop and let it bake for a little longer. If you don't have an eye opener, you can use a, a blow dryer. You just don't want to get it on a setting that's too hot where you're going to melt the plastic, right? So you want to stay on something that wouldn't be too hot, like it's going to burn you. It's going to burn you. It's going to damage the plastic. So common sense. All right, there we go. Okay. Let's switch back over this way again. Take this over this way. It's going to have a little bit of adhesive over on this side. And then there's part of an assembly here, wiring harness assembly. Okay, now we can get this one that we couldn't get to before. Let me just use the plastic one here. Might be a little better to... Yep, okay. Uh, 
All right, so we got all these off. Now we're going to disconnect it. So you probably won't be able to see this without me magnifying it. I don't even know if we'll be able to get it in the camera. But, yeah, there it is, right there. So you can see right on top. Let me see if I can hold this position. Come in here. There's a little piece of tape. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go. It's a little piece of tape here that you're going to peel off to expose this connector. That's what we were trying to show there. Once you peel this little piece of tape off, you can just pull this guy out, just like that. Now there's another one just like it over here. So same deal. We're going to pull this little piece of tape back. And then with the tape pulled back, we can get the connector to let go. Actually, guys, let me uh, get in here and take a quick look and make sure there's not a retaining tab on this one. Actually, I was wrong. I did need to flip that up. I thought I did before. We came back on the uh, film there. Sorry about that. Yeah, you have to flip this little retaining tab up and then work her off. Okay, and then underneath here, stuck on a little piece of that adhesive tape. All right, so we've disconnected everything we need to disconnect on this side. And again, referencing our replacement. All right, so we've disconnected this and this. There's only one more connector, which is the primary one here. These other ones are part of the original display's design, don't get disconnected. Okay, so we're going to have all this glued down that we need to work up nice and slow. Just so that it's freed up. Then we're going to pull the rest of this covering back. Again, we're trying to keep it where we can still reuse it, not let it get all stuck to itself. Now we're going to try and get this clear plastic covering the actual connector off. Okay, now I'm going to have to pause it for a second while I go focus in here and observe the type of connector we need to release. All right, guys, so there's your connector. It's an interference fit type connector. So we're just going to come down with a, a tool where we can work it off evenly. Patience, patience, patience. OK, 
Okay, we've got it disconnected. Now we're just trying to get it off. All right, so now we've got everything disconnected from the LCD. Just got to get the rest of our little sticky pieces. They're wrapped around these uh, connectors and cables and whatnot. Okay, so there's that one. There's that one. And there's our LCD, completely removed. Now we're going to put our replacement one in. And before we do any kind of um, you know, major stuff, we're just going to hook all these things back up and power on the LCD and make sure that it works. So we're just going to find a, you're not going to glue anything down, you're just going to temporarily hook everything up. So this one has a retainer connector where the original one did not. And since we don't have everything kind of hooked down where it's supposed to be, it's going to be a pisser to get everything lined up. Again, patience, patience, patience. For me, I don't have this under the microscope, so I cannot really see it that well. So apologize that we're having to make multiple attempts on some of these. Okay, we're going to flip this retainer up here. Slide this guy in. Being stiff, there he goes. All right, and now the primary connector. Let's get him lined up. Make sure he's sitting inside this little alignment bracket correctly, and then just push him in. There he goes. All right, now we're going to bend our hinge up a little bit just so we have a place to prop this. And all we want to do is we want to see if the screen comes on. And there's our HP logo. And there's our busy, sing, uh, you know, busy thing for Windows. So she works. So now we're going to power her back off and continue to finish up the repair. All right, guys, so since our screen worked, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and route and reattach our webcam and mic assembly up here. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to peel off these pieces of adhesive Yeah, it's super, super, super stuck here. There we go. You got to be careful on, you know, so sometimes, you know, you get these pieces of adhesive, and if they've been sitting for a, long, a while in the box, you'll get the backing blue stuff sticking to the actual tape. So be careful you don't rip the tape off with the backing. But I'm not necessarily going to bore you guys with me trying to struggle with this, right? So I'm going to pull these three off. I'm going to reposition this guy where he goes. Make sure you get the one, two, three, four holes lined up here, right? And then we'll get him glued back down, and we'll get all of these other pieces re-adhesived into position, and then we'll move on to the cover. Now, if you just needed to do the LCD, you're about done. All you would have to do is lift up the adhesive strips here on either side, and, and, and reattach it to your cover. Since we're also replacing the cover, we still got some more work to do. All right, guys, we got our pieces of adhesive tape off. Try not to have too much glare from the uh, light, and yet still have enough light for you guys to see what's going on. 
Okay, so we've got a couple of different sensors up here. Microphone, I think this is probably an ambient light sensor. Web camera, probably some other type of sensor here. Just make sure you're getting these lined up with the correct holes, right? So we've got um, a microphone hole. There's another hole for the sensor that goes straight through. Another hole for the microphone. So we should be lining it up like this. And that's all it is to that. And then we can always retest before you press it down all the way. Make sure your webcam's working. Make sure your microphone's working if you've got concerns about all that. But I just wanted to show you a close-up of that. All right, we're just going to continue gluing stuff back down. Nothing much to see. All right, guys, so we've gotten these pieces glued back in. There's a small adhesive strip on this corner that holds this one. And on this corner... It holds this one. We've got these pieces back. We've got this piece back. If we zoom in, we can see there's little retainers for the wiring here, 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 and here. And this one is not quite small enough to grasp it for some reason, but it fits in there and keeps it from getting pinched. Now, at this point, the LCD is done. The only thing left now is the cover. So on the cover, I mentioned before, we've got like the Wi-Fi cable routing around here that we've got to get off and this guy kind of scoops up this way Let's if I can get that out where you can see it right so we're just gonna go around and work him out he's also held in with a small piece of adhesive but since it's a you know a nice hard cable we don't need to use the eye open or anything like that we just need to work it out don't use anything sharp, obviously, because you can cut the cable and be complaining about your Wi-Fi speed from then on. Just get it out, and then we'll worry about removing all this old adhesive. And just to take care, you note where it goes in and out of these different little pieces that are molded in that hold it, right? And at this point, now we're ready to actually remove the antenna. Now, it gets held partially by this little piece of aluminum as well. That will want to work off without tearing it. I mean, if you're replacing the case, I mean, the cover probably really doesn't matter. But it's always good to get in the habit of trying not to damage anything. All right, so that guy is freed up. We're going to do the same thing on this side, and then we're going to lay it down and put the eye opener on these two copper pieces. All right, guys. We've baked our little antenna pieces. Let's see if we can get them to release. Zoom in. I might get you a view here. Got to get one corner up. There's nothing really to see. There's a little piece to this that sits underneath the cover. If we come up on this side here, we can see it's prizing off right there. It's just like everything else, go slow. This one's got metal in it and you don't want to bend it. Just gonna try to work it up on this side here. Once we can get one corner to let go, that'll weaken the whole structure and the rest of it'll as you can see, it's just all coming off now. The thing about this one is we need it to come off with the adhesive. All right, 
So there we go. All right, so we've got the primary piece off. Now we got to get this molded on copper that's glued on underneath it. And again, very slow because you don't want to rip it. And you want to let it bake for three, four, maybe even five minutes with an eye opener or a couple minutes with some heat from something else. All right, we're just going to attach this on the top of our screen for a minute. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, we're just getting the left-hand side one off. Super slow. You can see, again, this is a square area of the cover that is not anodized so that it stays bare for maximum effect with the metal. All right, we're done now. So let's go ahead and take these three screws off of the cover on this side. Phillips head screwdriver. Now I'm going to take our metal spudge tool in case it's stuck at all, and boom, there's our old cover. Come in with our new cover. Position our hinge and our screws. Now I'm not going to um, immediately Put them on. I'm going to use a little bit of what's called thread locker green. It's a very low strength kind of thread locker. You don't want to use like red or blue on something like this. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in that little container. And we're going to dab each one of these screws in that to help keep them from backing out on us. I'm going to do this to both sides. Just do this side on camera and we'll do the other side off camera. And then we'll come back. All right, guys, so we've got our wires routed. And if we zoom in here on each side, we've got our Wi Fi antenna pieces in here. We're just going to Stick our copper back down to our conductive areas on each side. And they're marked left and right, L and R, so you can't screw it up. And then if we zoom in really close, we can see that we've got it, wires routed under that little piece there, and it's wedged in here and here. It routes around that piece there, goes down, Zoom in here, there's a corner there, it goes underneath this little piece here, around, around, under, down, under, and around for the left side. And then for the right side, it goes through this notch, under, gets pressed into this recess here, under, around this corner, under this retainer here, pressed in here, runs up against the hinge there, runs up along the top, gets tucked under here, pressed in, pressed in, pressed in and under the little retainer there. So that is all in place now. What we can do is we can start to glue it down, right? So what we'll do here is we'll remove the adhesive covering on this. And again, this is another conductive area. So we make contact there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Try to take out the slack as much as you can. Okay, that's in position. Now on this side, we've got the adhesive that's going to hold the Wi-Fi cable, antenna cable, along the inside edge of the cover. Just trying to get this out of the way enough to grab onto it and pull it. Okay, so on this guy, you're just going to make sure you got them in there nice and tight. Get all the slack out. Just kind of pinch it towards the edge of the cover and into the adhesive strip, just like that. 
Same thing over here. You just want to make sure that it's nice and even. If you see any like pieces like that, they're popping up. Just manually work them in. This Chinese copy stuff is not 100% the same. So you're going to have little minor things like that you have to work through. Okay, so now we're ready to put these two pieces together. What we'll do is remove the backing strips from all of our adhesive pieces along the top corners of the cover. Right there. And again, watch out on these that you're not pulling the actual adhesive off. That can happen. And then right on the inside edge here, there's a small one. Okay, and then on our actual LCD, there's one there, and there should be one right here, yep. Yeah, come on. Okay, now we're just doing one last check. Connected, retained, connected, retained. All stuck in position, routed correctly, routed correctly, routed correctly routed correctly, all secure. Because once this goes in, it's going to be super difficult. To, oh, I almost forgot, along the top here, it's going to be a small, thin adhesive strip here as well to hold it in nice and tight. Now, as you bring it in, do the bottom first. And right as we see, as we come around here, we can see that this guy Got to make sure we get him routed right so you can kind of grip him and move him around if he's not in the right position. He goes through the little hinge piece. This guy here, we want to rest on top, both sides. As we fold it down, you look on the top piece here, right? So if we come around the top edge here, we're, we're holding it along the bottom first and getting it in where it's supposed to be here first. Okay, and now I'm going to go pushing it around on the edge. So you got two things going on. You got small clips and adhesive. up and so just going to go around and make sure that you've got this guy and he's sticking in everywhere he's supposed to be sticking all right so we're just going to keep doing that and we'll come back when we've got everything seated all right guys so what we're looking for here is we're going all around the edge we want to make sure everything's nice and even this is just the tab for the front screen we're not going to pull that off just yet Taking a look at our hinge ends, make sure everything's nice and even. We can go ahead and remove this now. And part, one of the hardest things of finding these is to get the right color shade, right? Because there's several colors. This is like a, a steel gray color. There's a silver color. There's like a black color. And we look at the actual screen. What we're trying to look for here is we'll make sure that we've gotten everything snapped and pressed in. Now this particular one, you can hear that little sound. That's one of the plastic clips. For some reason, just isn't grabbing well. And you know, that's these are both brand new pieces, so that's just you know Chinese knockoff quality. You have to live with stuff like that. But we're gonna make sure everything else is nice and seated really well. Everything snapped in on the bottom looks really good. We can go ahead and pull this top piece off that protects the screen. And we'll go ahead and fire her up. Try to tilt it a little bit so you guys don't see the glare. Well, we didn't mean to hit hardware diagnostics here. 
but we'll go ahead and go into this, right? Can't hurt to run diags on the LCD screen. So we zoom out a little bit because this looks like it's uh, So I'm going to do a drag and drop test, run once. Not really sure how this test works, so maybe that's not the best test. Obviously our touch screen is working, so we'll just exit out of that and go into this main window screen here. Let it boot up. into Windows 10. All right, so we're able to do our touch screen just fine. Everything looks good. All right, so everything looks great, guys. Um, you know, the only thing I guess I could tell you on this is that I noticed, maybe this is the best angle, right on this edge of this hinge, you got to look really close, but you might notice there's a little bulge here, a little bulge here. And what I noticed was when we go to put the LCD screen um, cable into this hinge, this piece just isn't cut the same as the factory original one. The factory original one from HP, right, they have a certain amount of a cutout here where this cable can run over on this edge and run over on this edge, and there's a little retainer here, and the knockoff just didn't get it quite right, and so there's a little bit of tension there. So what I'm gonna try and do is, you know, we'll use this and make sure everything else is working okay, and then we might lay the eye opener on here and put some compression down here to try and just ease that cable down just a little bit. It's just maybe off by a millimeter, millimeter and a half. I don't know if you guys can notice it, but I just got an eye for defects like that, and I can see there's just a slight bulge here. So that's the only thing that went wrong with this. I'll put links in the description for these parts. I hope you guys uh, found this useful. Repair of your HP NV360 convertible LCD touchscreen and back cover or top cover, whatever you want to call it. But if you got questions on how to do this or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help. If this helped you get your laptop fixed or save you some money, I'd appreciate tapping that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.